Hey, listeners, uh, Ginger here. I just wanted to make a quick announcement and say a quick thank you. With everybody's support, I was able to get affiliated with a company called King's Coast Coffee. King's Coast is a New York-based coffee shop, and they produce their own, or they roast their own beans, and then they package them up and they ship them out to people all over the U.S. and Canada. You can also go into the King's Coast shop and get your own cup of coffee. They've partnered with me as an affiliate, and if you go to King's Coast Coffee's website and use code GINGER, you get 10% off your coffee order. They have everything from cold brews to espressos and regular coffee. It's delicious. People in the community over on my Twitch channel actively drink King's Coast, and I've had King's Coast. I love it, and I'm going to be drinking King's Coast like crazy from here on out. So if you would do me a favor, there's going to be a link uh, in the description for King's Coast. It's my affiliate link, but also use code GINGER for 10% off your coffee order. Supporting King's Coast supports me and... It really is super cool, and I'm super excited for this. So get caffeinated, and thanks a bunch. Enjoy the episode. And welcome back to the Ginger Talks Podcast. My name is Ginger Snaps, and joining me, just coming in wicked quick, is uh, our good friend Druid. Druid, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, uh, wow, wow. I'm a highway star right now, that's how I feel. Um, <laughs> you, you know what? I, I'm just going to kind of uh, be plateauing for the first part of this conversation because I've just come in from something like uh, four hours on the road, uh, literally flying in. Uh, you can hear me saying um and umming a lot. That is not good. Uh, that's not good podcast spiel. Uh, so <laughs> if, we could, if we could stop moving this on, that'd be great. That's that's okay. Joining us this week uh, is someone who I've been really excited to have on. Uh, because I have a feeling it's going to be a little chaotic. We have a wonderful friend, Nightmare. Hey, guys. Hi, How Nightmare. Are How are you? Hey, yeah. Ginger. Hey, Ginger. Hey, Ginger. I tell you what, I feel, like, I feel like um, Captain Ahab finally getting his hands on Moby Dick right now because we've been trying to make this happen for quite I'm, some I'm time. I'm sorry, what did, you, what did you get your hands on? Moby <laughs> Dick. Oh, okay. Sorry, we're breaking up there for a second. Uh, oh, uh, <laughs> this, is all, this is all good copy, don't worry. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we fix it in post op. Uh, no, this uh, is. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. I feel like I've got. We finally got our white whale. Mm-hmm. Right we've. Uh, Nightmare is one of those folks that we've been trying to get on for a while, and the stars have finally aligned that we can have some some garden variety chaos nightmare is really good at like oh hey we're uh we're doing something super super chill and super fun and then just shenanigans everywhere yeah yeah 
Yeah. Uh, I, I sometimes break the mood a little bit when you're, <laughs> when you're really serious about, like, we're doing this fundraiser and it's for, for kids who are in hospitals. And then this blurb comes through and I go, like, oh, shit, that's a bad timing. <laughs> okay. He's not even listening. Like, he just drops into stream and he's not even paying attention and he plays something just, like, you know, highly inappropriate. Like, something to do with, like, dicks. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I never do that. I and we're that. raising money for kids with cancer. Uh, nightmare. Good to see you. I expect a donation to make up for that one. Oh boy. <laughs> okay then. Here comes a four dollar twenty donation. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's nightmare is just another one of those folks who's just highly chaotic, but still so fun and. The fun, funny thing about you being so chaotic is that you are very just chill. Yes, yes. Unless unless something happens that makes me unchill. Uh, <laughs> right. I was I was I was looking through some of the resources we have, and I saw a question already there. So. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. No spoilers, please. Um, no spoilers. No spoilers. But stay tuned. Please. We'll, we'll get there. You, you, we're going to hear just how chaotic this guy is across yeah. the span of some long form talk. Yes. May I just say though, um, great voice for it. I do. Okay. You've. Got, oh, I think so. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you. I, I'm. I'm always. It, it's very hard to judge your own voice, and I'm. I'm so self conscious about that. Uh, if if you're streaming. And you're just talking into nothingness and you get no response and the, the, the chat is just watching what you're doing. You're going like, are they just sitting there thinking like, what kind of idiot is doing this? Or nah. are they enjoying <laughs> it? Or like, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard sometimes. I, I can't, you, you know, this is why I've been so reluctant to get into streaming myself. It's just... Um, I do so. I do well bouncing off people, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's certainly, you know, I would hate to hear what it would sound like if I was just talking to myself for even ten minutes. Um, so that you know, that must be scary, right? It, like putting something out into the ether in that way, yeah. and just being like, "Oh, where where's the response for that?" <laughs> yeah, it's it's absolutely uh, yeah. And you get very little response back afterwards as well, because everybody's like, well, hey, this was great. Let me go on to the next stream. Right. 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 So, well, and that's. So, yeah. Thank you for that compliment. I try really hard if I'm lurking and I hear like a question getting asked or there's like a poll in chat that I'll just go up and just very quietly just like try to cause some activity. Because it's like, huh, I feel bad. Or like the times where it's like, so what do you guys think? And it's like crickets for five minutes. And I'm like, my hands are so full or I'm across the room. I'm trapped in my closet. <laughs> you see, I'm worried I do the exact opposite. I think I put streamers, when I'm commenting in their streams, I put them into something of a walled garden of my own like fucking design. Absolute bullshit nonsense. <laughs> Well, that's no. It, it, every single time that you've been in the chat through it, it it's been interesting because I have to stop and I go like, "Okay, he wrote half a poem. Let me read that real quick." <laughs> 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 and most of the time, it's excellent. I, I love, I love it. Well, that's uh, well. Thank you, thank you, my friend. Uh, it you know uh, my self confidence levels, uh, you know, need that now and again. Well, you two, so the day, the full day after I got back from my trip, I had been talking to you, Druid, and I got done with my work thing, came home, and I was like, oh, I'm going to put on a stream to lurk in and just, like, get some other shit done, because I had, you know, events to plan for and prep for and blah, 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 and I come... Come surprising to me, I open up Nightmare Stream to lurk. I was lurking. I didn't say a single word, but I was listening. And I was watching chat, and I just see Druid just popping off. And I'm like, this motherfucker right here. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, I, I think I think I was popping off as well. <laughs> that's like, a good way of putting it. I but that's one of the things that I love is like we are because we've talked about it before, but like just the the amalgamation of everybody like getting to know each other and seeing like new friendships form and like stuff like that just makes me so unbelievably happy because I just sit there and I just watch it happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. it's amazing the the the, the context and the, the friendships, like you said, that that we've made over the last two years. It's mm-hmm. crazy, right? Yeah, you know, well, and I, you know, even through doing the podcast, right? We, we end up speaking to such a an eclectic bunch of people uh, putting this together that to be a part of that as well. I mean, that's cool as fuck, right? Well, and it's because I one of my favorite things to talk to people about when they come on the pod is how we got to know each other or like our first real interactions and how we became friends. And I honestly don't remember ours nightmare. I, I mean, I've been trying to think about that too. I am thinking it was either fierce stream or David's stream. It's gotta that, be David. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that fatal was involved at some point or another. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's 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 been a long time. Um, we didn't start really like. I don't feel like because we would like see each other and be like, "Oh, hey!" But it was during the early days of Goose Goose Duck. Yes, yes. Oh, talking about chaos there, right? Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh and God! That was now, crazy. It, now it's you know. Uh, pretty standard to just be all like oh hey how's it going what you doing i'm dropping a lurk i'm causing some chaos deuces yeah. i'll see you later <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i think i think it uh you were not part of the valheim crew no that was uh sapphire jade i think was in there mm-hmm and of course, Chris and Meep and Lou and Fatal, uh, the the usual chaos experts. Yeah. Um. That that was oh god, that was actually the time that I started streaming because they invited me, saying like, hey, he might be a good fit for the rest of the the, the team, and uh, little did they know. Um, <laughs> But there were so many hilarious moments that I was like, I, I got to record this shit. And I'm like, hey, you know what? I got a copy of OBS laying around here. Well, let me just fire up my Twitch account and, and see if my, my key is still working. And Because I set it up in 2017. Oh, wow. And I did, I think, one, uh, one broadcast and that was it. Huh. I was like, yeah. I, I, we talked a little bit beforehand about the equipment, and this yeah. was way back when I had like a, an HP workstation with with the fans running at full speed, so it sounded like I was in a wind tunnel. So I was like, "Yeah, I can't, I can't really put this out. Uh, this is horrible uh, entertainment for anybody." Yeah. So, and and then I started in July of twenty one. Uh, I started like, well, let's let's record a Valheim session and and let's let's see what comes out of that. Yeah. And the so rest you, is history. You've kind of been at the call just over a year now. Then. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I guess my question, my question is: so what? So do you think the platforms changed? You know, kind of post pandemic, everyone's coming back. Do you feel that that's made a big difference? Because is, you know, that's one thing we all seem to have in common in this community right now is that that's the, the pandemic kind of shot a firecracker up all our asses and got us going <laughs> online. Do you think, I I feel that it has. Mm-hmm. I feel like the landscape's changed some, somewhat. It has definitely changed now that now that real life takes over because you can see that there's people who, who started streaming, they real life takes over again and they go like, well... Uh, that was fun for a year, and I'm off to doing my regular stuff again that I did three, four years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. 
and and it's it's a challenge uh, if if your real life job takes you out of town or something and trying to maintain a schedule because that's one of the things that I like to hammer into people all the time, and I've been hammered it's been hammered into me. Keep a regular schedule. Yep. Keep the same hours, the same days that you stream, because then people get used to it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, if, if like like you, Ginger, I mean, you're off for two or three weeks, and I can see the apprehension, like, oh my God, are people going to remember me when I get back? Yeah. Mm-mm. I I had the same thing in my vacation, in, in my daughter's vacation, I should say. We're off for a week, and I'm back for two, three days, and she's staying with me again, and I don't want to spend my time hooked up in my studio saying like, hey, let's do a stream for eight hours or four hours. Right. And you go watch YouTube or something. Right. Uh, and I can see the numbers drop at that point. And, and to, to answer your question, I think there are people who just say like, okay, fuck it, I'm done with it. I'm, I'm, I'm going back yeah. to my, my normal life. Yeah. And then to the rest, the rest of us, uh, the beautiful poison that we can't say no to, right? Right. Yeah. Well, uh, because oh man, my real life job is taking up so much more time, but I think I just prefer to be tired. Oh uh, yeah. Well. Yeah. Something too is like you are. Uh, your day job is is a little bit more in depth than some others it yours is taxing in a different way like when i was working at the big retail job hanging tvs and carrying fridges and stuff that was physically demanding but mentally i was i was still rearing and ready to go and that's when i had started streaming but like a mentally taxing job is is almost a mentally taxing job will make you physically exhausted uh, but yeah, on the other yeah. hand, yeah. it's it's beautiful if if you can hook up with a couple of your friends and and do asinine shit online and people oh, actually right. like it. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's a hundred percent true because I think it's it's great. You know, in my day job, I've got to be super official so much and mind my p's and q's. Then to just have a space where we can like let loose. Yeah. Uh, right. Fuck me, like I need that after a day of like listening to kids just out like complete dickweeds, man. And trust me, they do. Right. Um. Ill. So I've got. I work in a completely new department now. Mm-hmm. And here's here's something that's mentally ta- they all believe in fucking astrology. Oh no. I'm thinking, <laughs> so. I'm sitting there and I'm getting fucking psychoanalyzed on the first day. And, you know, I'm nervous enough as it is. <laughs> and I've got my new head of department going to me, oh, you seem like a Scorpio to me. And I'm like, well, no, I'm a cancer. And she's like, well, what a sign, basically the same. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you're just, you're acknowledging your own, like, fucking horse shit there. Um, I got. I, I gotta admit, I've watched some of the uh, horoscopes, and you go like, "Yeah, that's true. I am going to meet a mysterious stranger." Wait. <laughs> oh God. Everybody meets mysterious strangers every single day. Well, except during the pandemic, because you didn't meet anybody. But <laughs> right. You walk outside, and you go like, "Oh, there's a stranger. He looks right. kind of mysterious." Hey, yeah. my horoscope was true. I think I've got to tell this guy to not accept candy off these guys. Just quick, quick, <laughs> PS, quick PSA. Right. Well, the, I saw some meme that was like growing up in the 80s and 90s. Don't take candy from from strangers. Don't get in a car with strangers. And then the internet. Don't talk to strangers online. And now it's, I'm ordering a stranger offline so that I can get into their car and they can take me somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Like. Right, right, yeah. And everyone's watching Strangers Things. Or what right. was that one? That was cool. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that was just a chat room I was on. Sorry. Ah. Uh, um, uh, well, and I haven't told you, Jared. I have to go to schools every day this week, elementary schools. 
in case one of our employees doesn't show up. And then I will have to teach. Wow. 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 Well, good luck to you. Uh, uh, it's fucking... Uh, I'd say this new place, um, this new spot, right, is... I've never seen such, like, horrific levels of disengagement. And uh, I... Yo, so I'm, I'm like, handing out books, exercise books for the kids. And I'm like, this one kid... Uh, is just like not doing it. I'm like, hey man, can you? And this is like literally, can you write your name on your book? So like, can you get your, can you get the name down on your book in the class number fella? And he just goes, turns around and, and you know, no pretension, no aggression, just turns around and goes, no. What? <laughs> okay. I'm like, what the fuck do you do? Kids are little shits, man. Yeah. I blame TikTok. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it you almost know, sounds old, like you guys are catching man, up know. to the US standard, aren't you? Yeah, uh, apparently. I, I, I believe I made this point uh, to someone just the other day. You know, that global perception of the US, like, fuck me, the UK's right there with you guys. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's well, and so I was on my trip. So uh, I don't know if the listeners really kind of know fully. But I took a few days off to do a fun nerd convention. And then I worked for four days. And then the rest of my trip was spent with, like, family and friends. So I'm in a state talking to teachers who deal with just, like, kids who are just, like, oh... I'm wearing, like, jeans that have been patchworked together. I don't even know if there's material from the original pair of jeans. Like, poor. All the way up to, like, oh, yes, all of our students have, you know, a five-figure admissions cost. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, what the the fuck is even happening right now? Yeah. Like, Uh, what what you're saying... What you're seeing there is the wealth gap in action because the wealth gap right now is just insane, right? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, that, that moves over to education as well. Unfortunately, you know, you it's like you've got these community schools that are just in disarray, aren't funded correctly. And then you've got these guys that the privately funded, like, centres, and you're like, fuck me. Like, the, the only thing they're missing is an astronaut program. Right. Yeah, so are we sending some of the third graders to space today? <laughs> well, they're going to go up there and meet Richard Branson. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. wow. yo, it's, 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 it's crazy, man. The world's a crazy place right now. I feel like uh, we're living in some, like, biblical times, right? It's fucking crazy. And I'm not going to lie, I'm a little nervous to teach elementary school kids, at elementary school kids, magic tricks. That's Yo, literally what no, I'm look, doing. <laughs> that's what that's what you should open with, though. You should call them elementary cool kids, and they'll be God right damn it. Socks, right? <laughs> Son of a bitch! <laughs> Yo, well, she hard. thinks we're elementary cool. I mean, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that's... I was thinking about that too. What you were saying about the difference in in uh, backgrounds. There is most of the time in our area, at least, there is one high school in town. Mm-hmm. Right. When when I was growing up, and, and for the kids that at home that that don't know, uh, I'm originally from the Netherlands. I moved over here in uh, early 2000, but my education was was in the Netherlands. Mm-hmm. We had a high school every five blocks or so. Wow. So when you right. go to a neighborhood. You have a working class neighborhood that goes to a working class high school. You have the posh yeah. neighborhood that goes to a posh high school. So you didn't have that extreme difference. Yeah, it's funny. We have that as well. Mm-hmm. But they, but what what you find is that the school, like certain schools, there develops like a culture in that school mm-hmm. where. Um, by the way, I'm really aware that. Uh, absolutely nobody wants to hear uh, about the state of schools in the UK that listens to podcasts. But uh, 
irrespective of that, fuck you. Keep listening. <laughs> uh, we love you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being our community. We love you. Uh, yeah. No, um, we find that uh, cultures emerge in certain schools, and then if a culture of kind of misbehavior or indifference towards education starts breeding in that school, everybody in that school is now lost. Yeah, because the silent, the silent, uh, the the silent majority of students just don't have that voice to fucking scream louder over the kids that are just able to derail everything that's going on. Uh, but anyway, that's that. <laughs> no, I, it's, it's it's it's, it's <laughs> also kind of falling in lockstep with everybody, lockstep with everybody else. I remember the scene from um, Dead Poet Society. Mm-hmm. Where Robin Williams takes the kids out into the courtyard and says, "Like, let's start walking around. Just do your own thing." And at the beginning, everybody's walking at their own pace, and, uh, and, and at the end of the scene, everybody's walking in a cadence. Yeah. Yeah, like this is fucking society, isn't it? Right. Yeah. 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 A hundred percent. Um. Yo. Just um, stray off the path, guys. Oh, captain, my captain. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, dude! <laughs> well, and <laughs> like, I, I think because I watched at Poet Society in either high school or college, and like everybody had already been like, "Oh, Captain, my Captain!" I fun fact: I still have not seen Goodwill Hunting. Um, I would love to sit down and watch it one day, but like. There was a whole bunch of, like, for some reason, we were watching a string of, like, more serious Robin Williams movies when I was young. And I don't remember a lot of them. And it's, like, Robin Williams is one of those people where people are, like, you know, oh, my God, he was one of the greats. He was always so funny. And it's, like, no, but his serious shit was, was the good stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I always say, like... Fucking hell. Uh, what was that movie he did? One Hour Photo. Oh, he, God. He played the guy that uh, developed the the family photos. He became obsessed with the family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which, funny thing about that movie, he actually gives the kid a Neon Genesis Evangelion <laughs> action figure. <laughs> um, because and which apparently right were Robin Robin Williams loved Evangelion and and pushed for that figure to be put in the movie. Did you know that? I had no idea about that. Yeah, he's a he's a weeb man. I love that. And that's why he's doing. It's called Zelda. Oh, I didn't even, I didn't even pay attention. Yeah, he was a massive fan of uh, the Legend of Zelda. Oh, and, and and watched and watched like Neon Genesis Evangelion. Which is just crazy that Robin Williams was a a huge weed. I love uh, that. Really, really, he really should be the uh, the kind of spokesman for our podcast, you know? Right. I'm I'm actually not surprised because I think he had such a fluid mind that it it moved in so many different directions at once. Yeah, and yeah, the, I think you're right there. The, the and, best and... example of that is uh, inside the actor studio. Yes, he oh, did. I can did watch it so many times. He was great on that. And do you know what else yeah. he was great on, though? Um, sp- sponsors of this show, actually. Whose line is it, anyway? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, yes. He took over when the complete he, show, didn't he? Mm-hmm. When he was on Whose Line, he really showed, yeah. oh, this guy is just off the cuff, funny as fuck. But I say he took over the show. But he kind of fit in. He he dialed himself back so much that he fit in with the cast, and then he took it like a step further, and a step yeah, further. Yeah, right. Was, it was yeah. beautiful. Yeah, that's that's one one great episode. Oh God, who's yeah, and, and anyway? It's so easy to you know, <laughs> Drew Carey, <laughs> uh, friend friend of the podcast, uh, Drew Carey, <laughs> Colin Mockery and Ryan Styles, everybody. Yeah. Yeah, or uh, uh, Clive, Clive Barker did it before him, right? Uh-huh. Was it Clive so, Barker? Clive, uh, so the, I know the UK one had a guy called oh, Clive Anderson. Clive Anderson, sorry, ah, Clive Anderson, yes, yes, yeah. Yes. Different Clive, 
Same, which same. is great. Uh, which, by the way, uh, Clive Anderson uh, did a, a great interview with the Bee Gees where he managed to piss every member of the band off and they walk off early. And I really, uh, if anyone's just got a spare five minutes, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just now have in my mind, ha, 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 walking away, walking away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it is like that. Um, no, um, what is his name? Is it is it Barry Gibb? the singer of the Bee Gees, he just goes like, uh, yeah, shove your show up your ass, mate, and just walks off. It's absolutely fantastic. And Clive Anderson can't tell whether or not it's a joke, and he starts laughing, and he's like, oh, wait, you're serious. It's absolutely fantastic. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that... uh... Whose line is anyway? Colin Mockery is also a, a genius. Yes, there's, there's uh, yeah. so many outtakes where he makes uh, Ryan Styles laugh, and Ryan Styles is a straight guy. He's, He's it, it takes a, it takes something to to break him. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're pros, man. I when I was in college, uh, Ryan Styles and Colin Mockery came to my college and did a show. No and, way. Oh, yeah. God. And that was all that people talked about for weeks. And it was a little, it was probably like three months before that Kevin Hart was there. So we were somehow getting these great fucking uh, comedians and performers that would come to our tiny little Christian college. I mean, and, how did you do that? I don't know. Well, the will of God, my friend. Yes. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah, that, that's some divine intervention in the school funding budget. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Colin Mockery is still acting. Oh, yeah. Are they still doing Whose Line Is It Anyway? Yes. I Hold haven't on. seen it since the mid-2000s. 2022? I've got it. I, I, oh, sorry. That is this year, yes. Yeah. I'm looking... Unless you're listening next year, uh, listener at home, in, in that case, that was last year. So uh, we can't account for whether or not it's still going. New but, episode came out on Thursday, and it had Danielle Panabaker on it. I don't know who the fuck that is. She was uh, in The Flash. She's up, in a I bunch didn't... of... Uh, she's this <sighs> young actress... Uh, 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 Sounds hilarious. The CW strikes again. She uh, she was actually whoa, whoa, a Dragon whoa. Con. Whoa, whoa. Are we dissing on CW now? Uh... <laughs> Uh-oh. Yo, look, 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 look. You don't want to know what I think about any of that, man. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, um, I've got a funny whose line is it anyway anecdote. That yes. kind of implicates my dad a little bit. I will yeah, take it. We, uh, we were watching Whose Line Is It Anyway? And in just in the in the family room downstairs. And uh there was a there was a woman really prominently behind Drew Carey in the audience, and he kept saying, Oh, she's a famous actress. I don't know who that who do you what do you recognise her from something? I'm going, No, I don't recognise her. So we watched this episode, and the whole time he's like, "I recognise, I recognise her in the audience." So I looked up the episode, and I didn't have the heart to tell him it was like a really prominent porn star from the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I, "I think I must have been like fourteen, and I was really disappointed." In that. Oh, that's fantastic! I was really disappointed in that experience. Just that. Father son moment of yeah, that's dad just recognizing a porn star. Uh, if you didn't want to find out about your parents, right? Right. Yeah, I'd already found the VHS tapes under the bed. <laughs> oh, we just rented them. Oh shit! Sorry. Can we <laughs> cut that out? <laughs> <laughs> now listen, we were we were in college, so uh, this was back in the in the eighties. Uh, VHS. You rented a recorder and you rented a tape and uh-huh. you had a, a video night. We were at one point in the lucky situation. It was a complex of eight uh, buildings and the antenna system would come in on one of the buildings. 
And I went to a technical college and everybody else in that complex was going to the same college. There's a couple of electronic students who figured out how to link into the um, central antenna system. So they had a video recorder there and they could blast it out to all eight buildings. Oh, the dear. amount of tapes that were dropped off there is incredible. And about 50% of them were X-rated, R-rated, R-plus rated, whatever you want to call it, triple X-rated movies. At one point, you get immune to it. Oh. I, 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 I remember at one point we had a video playing. It was some kind of German porn movie. <laughs> and we're just having a just... conversation while that is playing in the background. And I glance over at one point, and it's subtitled in Dutch. And oh. I go, hold, hold, hold on, guys. What is going on here? <laughs> the subtitles <laughs> and the German was in no way related to each other. <laughs> at one point, there is a sex scene going on, and the subtitle just says out of the blue, not bad at all What in Dutch. Like, what, what is this a commentary or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny you say that. Uh, I actually, I ordered this DVD, right, once from um, Uganda. Uh, this Ugandan film studio. Uh, oh, what are they called now? Oh, leave it with me for now. Uh, it's it, it's a, a bunch of Ugandans that live in a village. I was going to say, that was uh, a rhetorical question, right? Because I Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't, it's something, oh, I can't remember the name of the production company. And I wish I could because I would urge everyone to watch it. Uh, they, they're, they, 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 they make Ugandan action films in their village. I mean, like, this is literally a village where people are, you know, walking a couple of miles for some clean drinking water. Oh, and they're wow. making these action movies, and the, uh, the name of the movie is "Who Killed Captain Alex." Huh. I know that. So this DVD arrives um, from Uganda, and it has loads of. It's super personalized, right? So it's on a DVD R, one of those recordable DVDs, and like scrawled in handwritten pen is like, uh, "You you are the world's best commando, Michael." on the inside of it and it's like super personalized there's a picture of uh, a bunch of ugandans with machine guns with a guy dressed as jesus christ saying like believe in the second coming of commando jesus michael oh my god and all this stuff. yeah it, it's like oh and but so i felt good buying this dvd because if you buy the dvd off them directly they customize it for you and uh uh, and the money goes to the village, basically. And it's the most hilarious, like, hour and ten minutes. Uh, I made my entire family watch it on my birthday. But the reason I'm bringing it up now is that they have something, and this is, like, apparently, like, traditional in Africa, which is something I never knew about. It's something called a video joker. Oh. So um, a video joker, a VJ, it's like a DJ over the film. And the guy just comments. So, and this is part, you can't get a version of the film without this. The film is playing, and then there's like a Ugandan guy just going, like, super action. And uh, he's, he's like, um, and so someone gets shot, and he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's literally commenting over the movie. It's absolutely fantastic. Oh, uh, hey, and, Druid. Yo. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I already told Ginger I was going to keep IMDb open. It is on IMDb. Who killed Captain Alex? Yeah. By the oh, Ramon Film Production. And yeah, yeah. While you're oh. talking, the trailer is playing. Uh, oh my God, this is hilarious. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's fantastic. It, you know, I urge everyone to watch Who Killed Captain Alex. It is fucking wild. That's fantastic. Oh they have the greatest special effects. <laughs> Honest to God, uh, it, it has the best CGI helicopter you've ever seen in this movie. Oh, that's... Uh, I had to mute myself there for a second. Fantastic. Uh, uh, all right, that's on my watch list. Thanks yeah. a lot. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's uh, honestly made better by this uh, video joker. He, um, he he. So you're watching the movie, and it's like 20 minutes into the movie, and he'll just like he's obviously run out of things to say. So he's like, he's saying, you're watching Captain Alex. It's a good movie. (laughs) (laughs) 
Oh. Right, so, and you're watching it like, wait, what the fuck was that? Yeah, yeah. Yo, yo, he, he like congratulates himself during the runtime of the film. He's like, this is the first video joker in English. Oh, <laughs> and, wow. Worth it for the video joker alone, actually. Yeah. Oh, yes. So that's why I'm wondering if there's like a Dutch guy doing that for German porn films. <laughs> but just for subtitles. Yeah, yeah. Right. Sh- yeah, sh- yeah. yeah. Schnell, okay. schnell, schnell, keep my masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how much subtitling can you do in a porn movie, to be honest? Uh, you'd be surprised. I mean, you can only do ah, 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 ooh, 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 so many times, right? No, no, because there's more script to it. Oh come on! Just because the pizza man slaps the the, the girl, <laughs> that's now. No, there's actually <laughs> the, the pizza man slaps the girl. Slaps the girl on her rear. What a mo- what a movie! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I was a, that was an inside joke. Uh, Ginger uh... got it. <laughs> See, well, I didn't even get it, and I fucking <laughs> the pizza man sla- slaps the girl. It's a quote from Supernatural. Yeah. Uh, that are completely bastardized. Uh, yeah. If the pizza man really loves her, why does he keep smacking her rear? Is the actual <laughs> quote. Thank you. Uh, but That's so. the only way you got to get that extra sausage, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I got some pepperoni for you. Oh, God. <laughs> Listen to that porn voice on Nightmare. That's I know. <laughs> Uh, no, sorry. That, that's my roommate. He's just left again. Sorry. Uh huh. Uh huh. There's this this goth bar here, and uh, they show like really obscure and typically very dark or like graphic horror flicks or some of those kinds of things and it's on one tv that's muted that's just like mounted on a wall that nobody fucking looks at but just you'll turn around and look towards the door and just catch this like weird scene of like a mexican horror flick oh and right part of the thing i love about this bar is it's uh got a very like roman catholic feel to it but goth and I love oh, it. God. And it's a tequila bar. So you walk down into the basement of the tequila bar because there's no sign for it. And you're just like, ah, yes, the Ecuadorian place smells delicious. And uh, I would like <laughs> three shots of tequila, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you're watching like the Sinaloa cartel presents like fucking Friday the 14th. Dude, it's crazy. But then like... Yes. On the weekends, so it's like the, the weekends. It's like oh, the, here's just like music videos that you're not listening to the music of. Cool, whatever. Thanks. Like it's <laughs> it's <laughs> one of my favorite bars here, and I don't go to it often enough. Probably because I drink too much tequila. <laughs> <laughs> That's how most good stories start, right? I mean, I drank a bottle of tequila, and then I mean. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> there is a, uh, uh, well, there's more than one website, but I remember that I was looking for uh, some software to share music videos with friends. Mm-hmm. And I come across this application that looks like it's it's fading. And uh, there's a couple of demo uh, sites on the, on the internet, so I go through them. And they're playing movies, and some of them are playing copyright movies, and there's this one channel that is playing horror movies, and these are like, the, not even the B-rated, there's like D to F-rated movies. Mm-hmm. And there's a chat going on at the same time, and they're commenting on the movie, and you got to imagine, this is like Mystery Science Theater 3000. Mm. Because everybody's making quips about what's going on, and and that make the movie right. enjoyable. Yeah, it was so bad. There was oh, somebody man. who was kidnapped, and and they're being kidnapped by a killer, and they're actually in their own backyard. Yeah, the rest yes. of the family doesn't know what's going on. He go like out the fucking window. 
<laughs> see them. <laughs> Stuff like that. Uh, and that's what it, uh, Captain I, Alex I, I thinks. Am such, I'm of. such... Yeah, well, I'm such a connoisseur of movies like that. As uh, we, We've talked about this on the podcast. I think we... What okay. did we bring up? Neil Breen before? I think so. Uh, Twisted Pear, man. Fuck. This guy, Neil Breen, uh, he writes, directs, and and is the lead actor in all his films, which is like, red flag, uh, this is an ego trip, right? And in every movie that he makes, he is like like a, a religious messiah. Mm-hmm. He's obviously so, like, um, dissat- sorry, I had a bit of gas there. Uh, <laughs> this is a great podcasting, by the way. Um, he, 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 uh, he, he like, so this movie, Twisted Pair, he, he actually plays two roles, uh, alien twins that are coming down to Earth to save the universe. And I, I believe he's just a roofer in, in his everyday life. And it's really clear that he just... He makes these movies to make himself feel good about himself, right? Which I just fucking love that. Right. <laughs> I, I love that flex. It's like that, that movie, The Room, right? Yeah. Oh, I was looking for that one. Yes. Uh, yeah. What's his name again? Oh, uh, Tommy Wiseau. Tommy Wiseau. Tommy Wiseau. Yeah. I I actually have met Greg Sestero, uh, who, is, you know, was kind of the straight man that Tommy Wiseau lived with while they were making the room. And uh, wow, just some of the stories that that he was able to tell about Tommy Wiseau, just crazy. But it's it's, it's a, on my you know, it's on my watch list and it's got the lowest meta score of any movie on my watch list. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so bad movie fans out there at the like listening to this, I reckon we've got a few bad movie aficionados out there. The newest one out there that uh, I think it's going to take the trash film world by storm is a little film called Blackbird. Okay. Direct, directed, written, and starring Michael Flatley, the Lord of the Dance himself. Oh. As a secret agent who kind of seems to muddle through his entire like process in the best way. And the the reviews for this movie are just awful, but it's clearly gonna be a good time. <laughs> I love shit like that. Yeah, you, you I mean, you know you know me. Uh, mm-hmm. this is this is my wheelhouse. I bought Who Killed Captain Alex. You know, I bought it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Enough so, said there, right? Yeah, right. Uh, but I'm so glad. I, but I, you know, I'll post. Um, I'll post some photos of the shit they sent me into somewhere on the uh, on the Discord community because it's just so worth seeing. Uh, it was so worth buying because of how personalised the they made it over there. The Ugandans. It was quite something. Yeah. God, bad horror movies. I remember two distinctly. Plan 9 from Outer Space. And oh, classic, the, yeah. Mm-hmm. Creeping Carpet. Oh, I don't know that one. That sounds like a, one of your fucking frat party <laughs> pornos that you're watching. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you ever heard of the Deadly Earnest Horror Show. Mm-mm. No. That must have been before your time. Uh, I think it was on Sky Channel or on MTV. But this was like uh, Deadly Ernest, who always dressed up as like a vampire. It was, I think, the male Elvira. And he had, at one point, the Ernie's, basically his equivalent of the Oscars. And he had the worst horror movies. This was, the creeping carpet was a, a monster that came from outer space. And was obviously a guy who had put a carpet over himself. Literally a piece of carpet. Yeah. And was chasing people down. Now, if you had just walked away from the carpet, you would have been fine. However, he managed to catch several people. When he would eat the people, people would disappear under the carpet. And he knew that because at one point he'd eaten so many people that they didn't all fit under the carpet anymore. And you could see their feet sticking out from under the carpet. It was so horrible, but it was so hilarious to watch. Oh. They're some of the best movies. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously, uh, fucking Samurai Cop. 
is one that comes to mind. Uh, uh, it's made by a filmmaker called Amir Shervan, who um, basically, you know, if you want to think about the what, where the quality of this movie sits, if we're looking at the Disney Plus metric, they, they, they did they obviously did reshoots of this movie while they were making it, and the lead actor has the most wonderful head of hair. But you can see the moment where he had his hair cut during the production and they did reshoots and you can actually see the wig. Oh. <laughs> I love that. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. There's there's so many bad movies out there. I'm watching the trailer for Blackbird here. Yeah, oh my God. I mean, like, this is what, the, you know, what makes Black like the idea of Blackbird so compelling to me, sorry, I can't get my words out, <laughs> is that um, the fact that he made it himself and puts himself in that role, the fact that you're watching this guy, like, actively try and sell you this ego trip of himself, um, where he's this secret agent that can just do everything. I mean, just to see that mindset, like on camera in that way is so candid that it almost like uh it almost like kind of sidelines into the fucking art realm in how uh how much of that person's like inner psyche that you see in that moment uh how naked michael flatley becomes in the fact that he's like well i'm gonna be a secret agent and i'm gonna get the girl i'm also 75 <laughs> right uh, you know I'd that probably reminds me of the mule. The mule. I haven't mule. seen that yet. Oh God! Before you even see it, you have to watch the Saturday Night Live review of it. It's oh. got Pete Davidson and um, oh shit, what's his name? I can't think of him now. But they do a review of the mule and they tear it apart oh. because apparently it's a movie directed by. Clint Eastwood, mm -hmm. starring oh, wow. Clint Eastwood. Mm -hmm. You're right. And I, I won't say anything else. Just watch the clip. I'll, I'll drop it in Discord later. It's hilarious. Um, uh, and don't you just love that, like, when you're watching the credits of a movie and it's, like, starring Clint Eastwood, directed by... Clint Eastwood, <laughs> produced by Clint Eastwood. Sound effects, <laughs> um, sound effects by Clint Eastwood. And he's, it, so that's there's why every time, two, every time someone two, drops a plate when Clint Eastwood's on sound effects, it's just <sighs> <laughs> instead of a smash. Right. <sighs> John Mulaney. John Mulaney. That was his. Uh... Oh yeah, John Mulaney. Yeah, right. John Mulaney's so good. Yeah, I. There we go. So in the resources. A movie that I absolutely love, but everybody also, um, like everybody, kind of like pokes fun at me for for like no, this is actually a shit movie, but it's also gold is the movie that I go back to frequently from dusk till dawn. Oh, yeah. And we it, did a little... Uh, we watched yes. that together. I, that uh, is one of my favorites because it's Tarantino without being full Tarantino. But also, yeah. just the twist. The twist. The twist is fantastic. And and by the way, and, and this is something we noted when we watched it, how great the... Um, Cheech of Cheech and Chong fame plays like five roles in it. Yeah, yeah. he's got and, three and, distinct and one, roles. And one of them is Pussy Guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got we got Hispanic pussy. We got <laughs> you know that, that guy. Yeah. Just it, it's so, so fucking ridiculous. And then the his spot in the end. It's like, wait, what? What? <laughs> There is a twentieth yeah. anniversary showing. Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm um, just I'm just getting up the pussy guy uh, speech here. Because... 
Um, oh my god. I. Oh. It's. <laughs> All right, pussy, pussy, pussy. Come on in, pussy lovers. Here at the Tilly Twister, we're slashing pussy in half. <laughs> Give us an offer on our vast selection of pussy. This is a pussy blowout, all right? We got white pussy, black pussy, Spanish pussy, yellow pussy. That's awful. We yeah. Got pussy, cold pussy. We got wet pussy. We've got smelly pussy. We got hairy pussy, bloody it, pussy. It's we insane. Got Snappy pussy. We've got silk pussy, velvet pussy, uh, nor hide pussy. What the fuck is that? We I... even got ho- horse pussy, dog pussy, chicken it's... pussy. <laughs> Come on. You want pussy? Come on in, pussy lovers. If we don't got it, you don't want it. Come on in, pussy lovers. That's, che- that's Cheech Martin in the role of Chet Pussy. Uh, yeah, from just till dawn, and uh, and the weirdest advertisement for a cat cafe I've ever heard in my life. Right, <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> just and that spot is a spot that like you see him in, and his his lines are what they are, and you're just like, oh, okay, they acknowledge it, and then they move on, like it's totally fucking normal. And I guess it's a t- Tarantino's involved in the flick, so yeah, it's kind of normal. But also, I can't believe he didn't say feet pussy. Oh god. Oh god. But on the other hand, Ginger, if somebody gives you a spiel like that about a, a bar, what what would you say to him? Like, would you just go like, yeah, okay, he's doing his spiel, just walk on? I mean. It- it depends. He's, already gone He's already gone in for the two drink minimum. <laughs> <laughs> it it honestly depends on what mood I'm in. It, it really does. Because, like, you can catch me walking down the street and somebody just says one off thing. And I'm like, oh, so we about to throw down over words that mean nothing. Or other times I'm just like, yo, what the fuck is up with this guy? <laughs> like, yeah. whoa. Uh, and just, yeah. like, keep on walking. Not a we walk got- away. Yep. Yeah, we got dog pussy, um, and you've lost me. I, I'm just like, mm, okay. But also, so like walking down the streets of Atlanta with Lila on on this, uh, at this convention, like we're going through a, a less than savory area going back to our hotel. And I can tell she's really anxious. And I'm just like chill just like fucking walking everything's good ain't nobody fucking with me some dude almost runs into her and she's just like wow and i'm like i need you to not outwardly react just give me five minutes let's get down the street and then you can react but he just i I don't care (laughs) and that morning we literally watched a dude take a big old rip of meth and then start oh. screaming. <laughs> um, and I'm well, like... Here's who at Atlanta, by the way. Uh, listeners in Atlanta, if that was you, please uh, call in for the next episode. We want you on the show. But the thing is, is like, for me, I'm just kind of like, cool. All right, we're just going to keep it chill and we're going to move on whenever. So like... Pussy guy on the corner is not gonna, like depending on the day I'm gonna be like, hey yo, can we tone it the fuck down? And then other days I'm just gonna be like, whatever, dude. Uh, you yeah, do you. So Finger guns away. Yeah, right. And and you know your health insurance is just going up dividends if you even speak to that guy. <laughs> right. Just like you know, I'm I'm good. I'm just gonna I'm gonna move move the fuck along here. I just, I can't. Yeah, as long as you, as long as you're in a neighborhood like that, you have to have eyes in the back of your head as well. Uh, yeah. Just, I'm, I'm almost. I, I don't have my head on swivels, but I do know what's going on around me. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I feel that I've over the years have been forced to become way more streetwise than maybe God intended, right? <laughs> um, not that I believe in God, by the way, guys. I'm not a fucking sellout. Um. <laughs> But oh my god! You, oh, the house across the street from me is going crazy right now. Is it still? 
Yeah, so I thought the police had moved them along, right? Mm-hmm. So for the for anyone that doesn't know, like uh, we had a burnt out car, we had a car explode across the street from me, like maybe a few months ago. Oh. Okay. And uh, yeah, so I've got I've got like you know without like you know nobody knows where I live, so it doesn't really matter. I'm not snitching here. <laughs> we definitely have like a major drugs operation going on across the street from me. And uh, it's, it, it it's a crazy thing, right? Yeah, because like I'm walking home and I'm like, do I feel safe now in this neighborhood? And I I realized actually I feel super safe because these guys they don't want to shit where they eat. They don't. They're not gonna mess around too much in their own backyard. Right. So I'm not getting burgled by them. I'm not getting like bothered by them. Okay, a car exploded. That's pretty bad. But, yo, I feel fine. I feel like I've got my mafioso guardian angels with me. Right. Well, that's like, I was walking somewhere by myself. I'm literally in a city by myself walking through, uh, and I'm like, I obviously stand out and I'm like, cool, I'm going to do my thing, I'm going to get in my car, and I'm going to leave. And somebody was just like, aren't you afraid? And I was like, no. no, Like, this is definitely not the worst place I've ever been. And then I get back home, and I remember how safe I act, like, the area I actually live in is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's how just kind of, like, it's, bougie. It's, a lot of it is is how you... Uh, behave yourself as well. That's kind of what you said to Lila. Like, don't acknowledge him. Just keep on walking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember that we went to um, New York uh, Thanksgiving after nine eleven. Oof! Oh, so shit. We we yeah, we saw the the smoke. It was still smoldering at that point. Oh. But I just noticed the difference between. The way that I walk down the street in New York and the way that my wife and father-in-law walk down the street. They mm. were tourists. You could tell. They're like... Yeah. Walking around, looking at everything, and I'm just walking like, we need to go to that metro station. I'm looking around me. I'm seeing things, but I have a purpose. I'm walking over there. Don't fuck with me. Right. Yeah, and... As so, you know, when I went to New York, I I can tell you that that is exactly you know because New York's not as weird as it used to be. I don't think. Mm-mm. And you went at a time when tensions would have been high, but like New York's, fu- it's it's just so densely populated with people. There's so many fucking weirdos in New York. Like, Listen, I I lived in play. Amsterdam, man. Come on. Yeah, but yeah, but so what? You get stag parties, right? <laughs> right. You just get people from our neck of the woods coming over yeah, about to get yeah, married, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh god, it was one of my best experiences. We we're sitting on um, in the red light district, right next to the hangout of the Hell's Angels, and we we're just having a beer. And we bonded with the Hell's Angels because there was a bachelorette party going on. And I'm like, God damn it, just piss off. Go, go do it right. somewhere else. And they were like, yeah, we hate those motherfuckers too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I've been to Amsterdam maybe five or six times. Uh. Um, I could say to live there, I mean, geez, it must be exhausting. It can be. Uh, the moment you get outside of the, the, the actual city center where all the tourism is going on, it's a perfectly fine town to live in. But right. yeah, it, it's but the tourism has very much taken over the identity of the city. Uh, in uh, what you've even, seen from it, then I think. Uh, what was that? What you've seen from it. I lived on one of the outsides of uh, one of the suburbs, uh, and we had a neighborhood bar. And it's kind of like if you know where to go in Amsterdam, you still see the old, right. the old spirit and everything. It's it's everybody comes together and does things together. You you know your neighbors and everything. It's 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 a great town to live in, as long as you stay away from the two squares, the Liza Square and the Rembrandt Square. Yeah, because everybody yeah. goes there. Yeah. Travel tips. 
Yeah. So you're telling me to get out of the bulldog? Is that what you... Oh yeah, no, no, go to the bulldog. Absolutely, go to the bulldog, and go to Paradiso as well. I saw, I saw, uh, I saw a rat in the bulldog. Okay. Uh, inside. Okay. What was he playing? Uh, he was he was a dirty Harry. Uh, I don't know. Uh, fucking. Uh, what was he playing? I really want to give you a good answer for that, but I just don't have one. I, I, I made him speechless. <laughs> Mark this in the podcast. <laughs> podcast history. Uh, <laughs> I'll be back. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's it's a wonderful town to live in. But, uh, yeah, there are certain things. And it's with every town that, that, that are not not good. Uh, it, it is so much better than it was in the 70s, at least. Uh, the Red Light District is a nice neighborhood to walk in. In the 70s, you do not want, didn't want to do that because yeah. the junk is on every other porch. So. Do you know what's the best thing about being in the Amsterdam Red Light District is just st- sitting on a bench and observing what's going on. And every time a student, uh, like a, a, not student, a, a tourist gets their camera and watching the bouncers outside collectively shit themselves trying to get down there to the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not done because the, the girls don't want to have their pictures taken. Yeah, yeah. You just don't do it. It's yeah. it's respect. I, and I completely understand it, but, like, so many people just ignore that fact. Yeah. Well, and here's the thing, too, is sex work is becoming more, like, accepted in general. It just, like over the like western civilization and stuff the fact that like oh the red light district in amsterdam is a little bit more cleaned up well yeah like i mean that's it's it's like ah so we're actually taking care of our sex workers fuck yeah let's go (laughs) my uh circling back to uh hell's angels my older nephew uh has a best friend who's a hell's angel Uh, so i want to i want to take you guys on this little journey with me because i learned this uh well after the fact my nephew who's like 10 now when he was real young they would my family would go to this little like lakeside town that has like uh arcades and like amusement park stuff and putt putt and just all this all this stuff but in like the 90s and early 2000s it was overrun by hell's angels and the hell's angels were just like nope this is ours now go fuck yourself uh slowly community got it back well the hell's angels still roll through there a lot and my nephew is with his grandfather at a bar and some hell's angels rock up and now his grandpa is an idiot and lets my nephew start talking to this hell's angel. Grandpa walks away, comes back and goes, where is grandson? And then you hear my nephew holler for his grandfather from the arms of a hell's angel. Is that, oh is that, isn't that the song in the arms of an angel? <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. <laughs> not not quite the same. And oh, okay. Right. And so our local Hells Angels would actually, they ride in like parades and stuff. Like, yeah. And uh, so they would they ride by. They do moon animals. I mean, <laughs> they would fucking ride by and they'd see him and they'd all stop and wave. And like, my nephew is this little celebrity amongst these Hells Angels. And so he goes there with my mom to that same area and he points out the dude and he's just like oh hey Mimi look it's so and so and my mom is just like what the actual <laughs> fuck is happening right now <laughs> such maximum respect to that guy he's played Lost in the Dumb GTA 4 like it just apparently like they're just like no he's our little buddy he's cool as fuck he's just you know this kid who's you know grandparents like motorcycles but will never own one and they've got really loud cars oh cool and then you know 
if something ever happens and that kid just like, you know, needs some help that mom and dad can't help with, I fear the motherfucker who crosses him and the Hells Angels find out. That is exactly the thing. Uh, Don't, don't give an attitude to them. Uh, We had a, uh, a Dutch new show on uh, Veronica. Uh, in Dutch, it was rechtstreeks uit Richter. It was um, uh, a guy who would, who would visit people on their birthday. And one time, he actually visits the, the head of the Hells Angels in Amsterdam on his birthday. Well, that went kind of south because uh, the guy who was doing it, Jan Lindfrink, that was the, the reporter who was doing it, he had a little bit of an attitude, and some of the angels didn't really like that. So, Oof. at one point, he was actually there with a, uh, a bodyguard, for lack of a better word, from the angels. And he makes the wrong move, and the, the clip is on YouTube, because I watched it several times just to laugh at him. He gets hooked by one of the angels. And they have to pull that guy off of him because he just disrespected them. And that's something you don't do. But it's asking to lose your teeth. Yeah. yeah. I think he had them, but he was very close to losing them. Like, I, I do some stupid shit. And I say some stupid shit to people I shouldn't stay, say stupid shit to. But I'm also a firm believer of I, you know, I will cash checks that my mouth writes. And if I can't cash that check, I will take that responsibility. Like fighting Joe Rogan, if I ever got the chance to actually have a professional boxing match with Joe Rogan, he would probably beat my ass, but it would be worth it for content. (laughs) I don't believe he would. Anyway. I mean... All that ivermectin going around his body. Well, that, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry to bring that up. Back up. I thought we were, <laughs> we were smooth sailing out of that realm, but I brought it back. Not at all. We know, we, yo, look, he, we know he listens and he yeah. never answers the call. So that's that's on him now. Yes. I can't wait for a master cut of all the times I've challenged him to a fight to eventually <laughs> hit his airwaves and he's just like who the fuck yeah. is this yeah we've got joe rogan pussy <laughs> <laughs> oh my you god know how it is. you know yeah. how it is. we'll take well uh, yo anyone that's got over a million subscribers will take you on mm-hmm. and that you know and we'll also take on ben shapiro we'll take on jordan peterson <laughs> Here you go. It's not uh, about the quality; it's about the quantity of the listeners, right? Y- yes, I think I think so, and that's what you know. That's why we sell out every opportunity we can <laughs> on this show. Oh, what's that? I've just got a text. Wait, who's that? Who's that? Oh, it's Elon Musk. He's just asking how Nightmare's doing. I'm just saying he's doing great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Tell him I call him later. Yeah, I'm like. Yeah, he's like, oh wait, let's wait a sec, bro. I didn't didn't think you liked material possessions, so uh I don't know what your text on, fella. He said he's borrowing <laughs> he's borrowing Ted Sarandos's phone. That's ah, uh, are they on the on the golf course today? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're out there with Trump. They're having a secret uh, meeting about they're having a secret meeting about offshoring taxes to the Caymans. Um uh, beautiful. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, what was that? Oh, no, I've just got pinged by Anderson Cooper. He just says, oh, you, are you free to make a comment? No. <laughs> I won't. I won't succumb myself to the mainstream media. Uh, well, I'm speaking of selling out. Uh, this isn't quite selling out, but I, I thought about this and I saw our merch on people in person. Oh, that's great. Like the golden 10 merch, the golden 10 and zero hours of usable content. Oh, dear that's fantastic. <laughs> uh, can I just say like, you know, golden 10 is just some guy in his room that 
put glitter paint on his penis. And little does he know that there's a little pocket of the internet where they just know who he is, and they're also wearing his username on their chests. Uh, right. <laughs> you know, and if that's not, like, forward motion, and that's not, like, just one of the more beautiful aspects that life on Earth can give you, I don't know what is. It... And hearing screamed from across the street, Ayo girl, you shit with that ass. I, I was just going to bring up the t-shirt that I still have sitting in, in like draft mode. Like literally <laughs> I hear from across the street. I'm standing there on badge pickup day at the convention. Ayo girl, you shit with that ass. But the only two words I heard and I instantly knew was shit an ass in that order. I if I hear that in public, I am coming out with like a fucking blade. Dude. Ayo girl, you shit with that ass, and I turned and I looked and it was fucking star. Oh, ah. Classic. You see, you see, like, I'm sick of people saying that to me. I'm out for a meal with my family and people are like, Ayo girl, you wanna shit with that ass? And I'm like, nah. Bruh. But, I'm trying to order. A, I'm trying to order a spinach and ricotta girasol. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, spinach is is good for it. Never mind. Let's, let's just move on. God damn it! Yeah, have you ever wanted the proof? Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> but on on the the connection of selling out, like merch, like our our merch and our Patreon are still doing things. And we're just yes. starting season three. Yeah, give us your fucking money. I'm still cool with that. Like, uh, yeah. Yo, I know, I know we've been going for a little while. I know that we're losing that like sparkly sheen that we once had. We're not <laughs> we're not young pups in the podcast game anymore. I mean, look at look at the guests that you have online. You're really scraping the barrel. I mean, this nightmare guy. Look, what, what the that, fuck is he? Wow, don't what even, the fuck what, is don't, he? Don't even talk to me about that. <laughs> I'm used to a different caliber down here. Yeah. Um, oh well. Look at this. I'm glad. I'm glad that we've got someone that we can be sarcastic with. Uh, yes. He, this guy. This guy understand. We we bro down hard on the uh, the sitcom chat. The British sitcom. The sitcom. Sitcom. <laughs> yeah. 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 The quality okay. comes down, right? The sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> We oh, wrote down hard on British yeah, sitcoms. Yeah. Yo, yeah. I, and 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 for me, it's funny. Like I never feel patriotic, but when we were talking about British sitcoms, I sure as fuck did. <laughs> oh hell yeah! I mean, we could go on. How long do you have in this podcast? Another two hours? <laughs> well, like honestly, I mean, like the sky's the fucking limit with this thing. I um, watch. I watched the documentary on Rick Mail the other day again because I watched it several times already, and it's just amazing how much shit that guy has done. And that's just one comedian. Yeah, right. And it's, yeah. and he's great, underrated. Um, Absolutely. I'll point I'll point people again to Hogs of War, the PS One game where Rick Mail does. It's a it's a Worms clone in three D. Because Worms was still 2D back then. Mm -hmm. uh, but Rick Mail, so Rick Mail provides all the voices for all the characters in the game. God. <laughs> and it is absolutely, it, and, and his presence makes it absolutely a joy to play. Because he's, he's a hilarious dude. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, it's something really insightful and ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> British sitcoms are better than American sitcoms. That's fair. I'll leave that. I'll lead off with that. Well, that's Nightmare because... shared something with me at the top of, or like shortly before you joined us. And. I don't know if he wasn't like if he just didn't know how much laughter there would actually come from me, but I was just like, "Oh yeah, big punch at the end, giggle, giggle, giggle," and it's like, it's not, it's... "Holy fools and horses!" <laughs> and wow. I think 
through it. It's it's the the most famous clip from Only Falls and Horses. So am I thinking is is it where he falls through the bar? No. Uh, it involves a chandelier. Oh fuck! Right. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a national institution that comedy. Yeah. Well, and uh, it, the the thing is, is it's it, comedy where you're at is so much drier, but also everything here is just like yikes on trikes. We're just repeating the same shit over and over, aren't we? Yeah, we've all seen Dahmer and Greg. Um, oh. I I say everyone that can hear my voice needs to watch Peep Show. Uh, 